I'm John Batchelor, Gordon Chang, Forbes.com, and Amity Schles, our colleague, author of Coolidge, is here because uh, Amity has bought, brought with her two wonderful guests, Rose Tung, who is translating, a journalist who is translating for the author of an award-winning new book, Tombstone, The Great Chinese Famine, 1958 to 1962. This is a period of uh, history which is behind the curtain, and we're separating the curtain right now. Rose, uh, before we broke, we were listening to the author explain the origins of this idea of all of a sudden taking the food away from people and catching up with the United Kingdom in 15 years. Would you explain what he said so far and then uh, fill in the details if we need to ask more, please? Such a great famine of such a scale was mostly man-made, not a result of natural disasters, as the government claimed. Uh, as the then uh, national president of China, Liu Shaoqi, said to Mao, uh, this famine uh, is a result, 30% uh, may be natural disasters, but 70% man-made errors, man-made mistakes. Um, Mr. Yang was saying, um, it's China's leaders these elites, they, they had this grand plan. They wanted to build this u beautiful utopia. Uh, so they brought collectivism in, to China. They stripped people of their personal freedoms. Um, and uh, they, they, they wanted to, uh, to take everything in control, but in, the, uh, in result, they brought great catastrophe. Mr. Young, in a country that has enforced amnesia, about this whole incident on this entire country of China. What made you write this book? Like China, 所以我必须记下这个历史，让后面人知道，呃，对对对民族、对国家的前途、前进都是很有必要的。It's uh the very reason of why I feel obliged to write this book. It's because, as you what you said, collective amnesia among the Chinese. Many young Chinese do not know. Uh, China's past, uh, and uh, 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 as an old saying goes, uh, if a nationality uh, does not know its past, this nationality, this nation has no future. So I wanted to write this book, let people know our past, so hopefully we can have a future. And how long did it take to write the book? <laughs> 这本书写了多久？这个书当然不是专门写书，一边工作一边写，从收集资料到写作十年左右吧。I never really set aside time just to focus on this book. I I wrote it on the side as I was working as a journalist. So overall, it took me around a decade, ten years. Terror, terror is how the tyrants of the 20th century worked. They didn't have governments. They had terror. They frightened people. Is that how the famine worked? Were, were there terror tactics used in order to get people to give up food from their children? Uh 当然，农民饿得不行的话，在地里偷点粮食吃是有的。他偷粮食被如果被发现，就会被打死，呃，挨打，有的打死。所以当时除了饿死人以外，很多人是被打死的。Terror is a norm uh, in a totalitarian uh, regime under a dictatorship. Uh, uh, people were uh, horrified all the time, of course, uh, but also um, the, uh, there were people who were really 
uh, starving and they were desperate. So some of them did steal food. Um, but if they were found, they were discovered to be stealing food, they would be beaten up and they, usually they were beaten uh, to death. So the death toll in the Great Famine, some of them were a result of these uh, beatings. Story from the famine in Ukraine, 1933, forced again by a dictator, terror. <laughs> The story, and I do not have access to this book, so I tell this from the Ukraine. <clears throat> Parents hid their children so they wouldn't be stolen and eaten. Did that happen in the Great, in the, in the great Famine as well? He said, this story made me think of 1933, in the war in Ukraine. People also lived in fear. Even parents taught their children they were not allowed to steal things. If they were to steal things, they would eat things. This is the situation in the Chinese situation. This is the situation in the Chinese. 但在恐怖制度底下就是家父母都是希望孩子要顺从政府要听政府的话如果不这样就很危险这么一个人来说为了安全如果产生一种跟政府不一致的想法马上心里感到恐惧马上就改变了 so uh, in, in this uh, uh, under this dictatorship uh, which rules with terror uh, for the Chinese parents they always told the educated uh, their children told them to obey always obey never dis uh, disobey in case otherwise they will be in danger and for those people who even have had the slightest thoughts of disobeying a disagreement they would uh, uh, f uh, f uh, find terror in, in, uh, in their mind they, they will be frightened themselves were people willing to tell their stories to you were they reluctant or did they want to discuss it because they felt they wanted to relieve this burden on them 就是说，呃呃，你当时采访这些人的时候，他们愿不愿意讲这些，或者是还是很愿意讲，就是把这个心头的包袱给卸下来。嗯，很多人愿意讲。Many people were willing to tell their stories。嗯，到新疆找，不光找一般的农民，还有找当时的干部，他们都讲讲了很多情况。in many, many places, for example, uh, this county called Xinyang in Henan province, uh, uh, the local uh, officials and the peasants I uh, interviewed, they, they were all willing to tell stories. We learned that not all starved to death. Some were murdered or beaten or tortured, and many committed suicide. Is that true? Is that accurate? 我们也听说啊，还有就像您刚才说的，很多人啊，大饥荒死的人啊，不光是饿死的，有被谋杀的，有被毒打致死的，还有自杀的，是不是这回事儿？是被毒打的很多。Yes, many were beaten up badly. They were beaten to death. I have statistics on that. Suicide. In my book. Suicide. Lots of suicide. 自杀呢？自杀呢？自杀也有，因为我看到一些情况，比如呃自己孩子死了。或者为了让孩子留下粮食，自己自杀死的也有这样情况也有。Yes, I, 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 I did uh, uh, found some suicide cases. Uh, some of the cases is because the parents were so uh, uh, saddened after their children died in starvation, they committed suicide. Uh, some of them killed themselves so the their children could have the food. And we hear the stories of the living eating the dead. Was this widespread throughout China? 就是我们也听说了有吃人的事件。当时是不是很普遍？嗯，当时有文字记录的人吃人的事件有四五千起。At the time, uh, according to uh, official records. Uh, the ca cannibalism, cases of cannibalism, were several thousand cases. Most of the cannibalism uh, was about eating corpses, dead bodies they dug out. Especially in the winter. Uh, the dead bodies, they were left in the fields, out in the open for a long time, but they were not decomposed that quickly. So people would go around and cutting pieces of flesh from those bodies and, and ate them. Asking about 
the cities and the countryside. Was there a difference? Did the cities suffer、uh, differently than the countryside? 请问你城市和农村有没有区别？呃，那个呃，城市呃，他们呃，遭受的这个呃程度和那个农村大不一样啊。我是主要是农民，有城市有粮食供应，政府供应粮食。Most of those who starved to death were peasants, because in the cities, uh, the uh, urban uh, population they were guaranteed uh, uh, certain portions of food. 但是城市也很饥饿，因为农民。But they were they were pretty hungry too. 啊，因为粮食少，减少定量。Very scarce. 每个人。Everything was rationed. 譬如大学生，三十斤粮食，后来减到二十八斤。嗯，当时真的长身体，除了粮食以外，没有肉，没有油，所以很一般市民二十六斤、二十五斤粮食也给很不够吃，所以很难挨饿。城市的浮肿很多，浮肿病很多。So um, the food was so scarce. Everything was rationed. For example, for college students in the city,、uh, at the beginning, their monthly ration for、uh, rice、uh, noodles, you know, the staple food,、uh, were about 15 kilos, and later on was reduced to 14 kilos. There were no meat, no cooking oil, not even animal fat. That's why we saw a lot of cases of edema in the cities. We're speaking with Yang Jisheng. He's the author of *Tombstone: The Great Chinese Famine, 1958 to 1962*, translated quite carefully by uh, uh, Rose Tang. Gordon Chang of Forbes.com and Amini Schleis is here.、Uh, the author is leaving momentarily to return to his homeland in the mainland. And when we come back, he's here to receive an award, the Hayek Award for 2013. And we have Amity here, and I'm going to ask her when we come back. To explain how it is that Friedrich Hayek and a, an award name for him connects to what we're what we've now just learned about a a mass murder. That's what this is. This is a crime against humanity, and how Hayek's philosophy connects with that and warns us very carefully about totalitarianism. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. <laughs> 